Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was trained by Danzo. Her face. I remember her face. A boy trained to kill is brought into the light. Gray, different Naruto heavily stealth based and root trained, but not in the traditional sense. How will he cope with that most dangerous of foes, emotion? Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 1, A Meeting of Minds. Some years after the QB attack, the Fire Lord's castle. He waited. It was something he was good at. The courtyard before him was abuzz with movement, sound, color and light. Guests in great formal kimonos, elegant silk and polished jewelry spread around the courtyard. Hurried servants in the colors of their lord also moved about swiftly, trying to stay out of the way and out of sight. They carried platters of sweet meats and piles of pastries and thin flutes of bubbling drink. A part of him was offended at their slow, clumsy movements. The clothing was all wrong for the task, the orange cloth ungainly and offensively bright. He mentally shuddered at the color. What kind of idiot wore that for work? Mentally, he plotted courses that would work better. He worked out supply routes routes that would be more out of sight, or methods of improving efficiency. He worked out their rotation systems and balked silently at the crudity of it, and how bad they were at keeping it. His single visible, I picked out more details he already knew. The guards were patrolling diligently, their patterns obvious and easy to decipher and avoid. So far, he had picked his way past several such patrols. His progress had been almost comically easy. After all, ninjas were meant to be stealthy. They were meant to be good at details. The window overlooked all of the entrances to the courtyard and was brightly lit, a great beacon of welcome, a great centerpiece of the great castle that the daimyo occupied. At the base, a squad of elite samurai stood guard over the great oak doors to the tower. At the top, half a dozen more made sure nobody could get to the top without being visible themselves in the glory of the light that shone from it. It was so brightly lit and so well guarded that nobody had bothered to check the small, dingy window about halfway up, which was darkened to glorify the majesty of the top of the tower. The candles nearby only existed to let people slightly know what they were doing. Any guard worth his salt could climb those stairs in the dark anyway. The flickers on the wall behind pleased him as he waited. After all, they didn't show his shadow. He ran black gloved hands over his weapon. The crossbow was an antiquated and little-used weapon in the world at large. When opponents tended to see you before you could fire, and it being as good at close range as a caramel dagger, nobody really bothered to use it. It was also slow to reload, at second or two of downtime where a dozen shuriken and kunai could be thrown, and that was with a skilled practitioner. But it was compact, powerful, and more than capable of taking out anyone who didn't suspect it. More importantly, with a little bit of extra modification and just a touch of chakra, things could be made a little more different. His eye flicked to the grand archway that led into the courtyard. It took in the fi fine marble work and its foundations, working out angles and determining the best places to put explosives should he need to take it down if he wanted to use it for his mission. He flicked to the flagstones on the courtyard. Foundations, tunnels, gas attacks with smoke to disguise his movements. Surprise Dotan Jutsu maybe. His mind was less a mind than a thinking engine, programmed to work out the quickest way to complete his job. And every other way possible. And the probability of success for every possibility. Kept the mind sharp. He eased his finger into the trigger grip of the bow. It was nearly time. The bell atop the tower began to toll. Bong. The chatter from the crowd became quieter as the first blow reverberated and the event began in earnest. Bong. A silence fell as they turned towards the archway, the figure in the tower pulled his long hood up over his head, hanging it at an angle so that his visible eye was left uncovered and the other kept further into the dark. Bong. The first figures emerged in the archway. The figure in the tower placed his hands together as if in prayer. Vong. 
The figure whispered a few syllables before taking hold of his weapon once more. The entrance party made its way around the corner. Bong. The figure brought the butt of the crossbow to his shoulder. It fit like a glove, the stock shape to fit his figure. He slowed his breathing down as far as he could to decrease any movement. Bong. The figure shut his visible eye and prepared himself. Bong. The target became visible to the naked eye as he passed the great masonry archway. Clad in a rich robe trimmed with animal pelts, he was every inch the vision of a prince. He waved to all around him, blowing a kiss into a group of tittering ladies. Vong. The figure stopped to absorb the crowd's adulation. There was barely a whisper as the finger twitched the fire mechanism. Vong. The daimyo's son fell to the ground as the bell sounded. People looked over to see what had happened. The crossbow was swung back to hang on his back as the figure began flying through hand seals. Vong. The first guard reached the daimyo's son and saw the crossbow bolt sticking out of his chest, having pierced the armor under the robe straight into his heart. He looked to the tower where the bolt had been fired from, the fact obvious from the angle the bolt had it. Vong. The guards in the tower moved to sweep it clear from top and bottom. The figure leapt upwards as he heard the clatter of iron boots on the stairs. Vong. Midnight struck, and the guards met in the middle of the tower. There has to be someone here. There can't be, they'd have to be invisible. Even Shinobi can't do that. They must have somehow got past, locked down the castle. All the guards moved off efficiently down the stairs. As the door at the bottom slammed shut and was locked, the figure dropped silently from the ceiling, deactivating his jutsu. He walked slowly up to the tower to once again wait. Knowing the guards, they would leave the next day to search the nearby countryside for anyone suspicious. By then, he could be long gone. He pulled the hood off his head, stroking a dark-gloved hand through his blonde hair. Another job done, another target taken out for his lord and nation. His footfalls were like a child's, light and making barely any noise. Mainly because they were the footsteps of a child. The hooded cloak rippled softly behind him as he moved up the tower. It was difficult to describe the, the color of the cloak. Black wasn't right. It was close. It was more of a dark gray than a deep, deep green and a midnight blue. It was like a shadow, like raw darkness. He reached the top of the tower and shut off the great light at the top. Nobody would really notice with the guards running everywhere. Finding the darkest corner in the room, he pulled the cloak around him in a practiced movement. His hands cast the genjutsu that would smooth the darkness around him just in case anyone tried to find him again. He allowed himself the luxury of a smile. Uzumaki Naruto did what he was best. And waited. A day or so later, Hiruzen Saratobi sat in his office, watching out of the window as the sun set beyond the monument. The sight was beautiful, and the day's sunset was a beautiful pinkish red that tinged the clouds in the sky. He sighed. It was a great sign of peace to see such a sight. And such a shame that he was about to deal with his own proverbial devil that haunted the nights beyond his reach. The figure didn't bother knocking. It was on schedule and he knew that Saratobi kept nights like this free for such occasions. Near-silent footfalls moved him across the floor to stand alongside him. They stood in silence together. It wasn't really what you'd call comfortable silence. It wasn't all that tense either. It was a silence filled with grudging respect. Do you think Sensei chose right Danzo? You always ask this Hiruzen. We both know what I'll say. One of us had to be the poster boy. One of us had to do the unthinkable. I could never do what you do. I couldn't order death so clinically, so easily. I may not like it, but I do need you. And I couldn't really do what you do here, Rosen. I lack the gentle touch. I think I could be Hokage someday though. Hirozen smiled. The conversation repeated itself every time they talked like this. Still, better get down to business. 
you know, I received a letter from the daimyo today. Danzo, Danzo raised an eyebrow, his face a picture of innocent surprise. What news from our lord? Apparently his son was murdered during his coming-of-age party. In his very fortress. All the security measures were in place. It has come as quite a shock. Sounds tragic. Indeed, shot in the heart with a crossbow bolt that penetrated the under armor he was wearing. The shot fired from a tower window where nobody could possibly have been. Sounds like poor guard work to me. Apparently so. He has written to me requesting a squad of ninja to protect him like the twelve guardian ninja did. Just in case the attacker tries to strike again. How prudent. Indeed. He should be careful after the problems with the previous group though. No doubt you will warn him of such issues? Of course, couldn't have harm come to him for the sake of our reputation. Hiruzen puffed on his pipe. The smoke rose lazily through the warm evening air. It also appears that when the maid staff went to clean his son's chambers, various bits of incriminating evidence to a number of crimes was found. Shocking. The son of a daimyo corrupted into breaking the law. The list makes for some reading of course. Corruption, embezzlement, connection to various guilds, rape, working with missing mean to assassinate people who got in his way. Associations with people of ill repute as well. Horrifying. Kidnap as well. Seems he wanted to raise a private army. A silly ambition, no private army could go undetected by you Hirozen. The both smiled at the in-joke between the two. Could you imagine what would happen if he had become daimyo when his father passes on, long may he live. I guess he would try and become Hokage himself, through a puppet of course. Of course. Silly boy, I almost suspect that his father is secretly pleased he has been, removed, shall we say, from the world. Is that why there has been no substantial search for the perpetrator? I'm sure. Sure they'll be found soon enough. They stood in silence once more. Danzo, you've been good if sometimes worrying counsel since I had to retake this position. You know I am thankful I have you behind me, even if I do suspect you may one day stick a knife into my back, and have several plans ready to do so. It's what friends do. I think. I was never good at friendships. How is the root program? Much as before. Numbers are still necessarily low, but missions are at an all-time high success rate. I think I've only had to take drastic action once in the last month. Fortunately, it went without a hitch. My latest operative returned a couple of nights ago after a successful mission. It was fairly simple for him. Any more detail you'd care to share? Oh, nothing too important, just dealing with a silly man whose death makes the world a better place. Silence again as Hiruzen added a fresh plug of rich tobacco to the pipe. How is he? Naruto? The Hokage thumped the table suddenly before relaxing his arm. No, one of your other unnamed operatives. Of course, Naruto. The words sounded exasperated and rehearsed, but Danzo suspected he could hear the slightest touch of anxiety and care behind them, it was hard to tell. He is doing well. I've never met anyone with a more natural aptitude for stealth in my life. It serves him well. Analyze him for me, give me a breakdown of strengths and weaknesses. He's quick thinking, excellent at long mid-range, and as I said, stealthy. Damn quiet, and has fairly good genjutsu skills. It's interesting actually, I didn't teach him any per se, but he made one that helps him blend into the darkness. Very interesting. Interesting indeed. Weaknesses? Straight up fighting. He doesn't have all that much up close and personal, and he's not hugely strong. He is in taijutsu maybe genin level at best. He doesn't like ninjutsu either, but can use the basic three. Although give him a kunai and a place to hide, and unless the person he's going to kill has very sharp senses, they will probably die. Hum, he's not a shinobi like the ones we know then. He's a specialist. If anything, he's cold-blooded assassin material. 
but you knew all of this Hiruzen. Not a meeting has passed since you entrusted him to me that you haven't asked after him. I understand why of course. How do you think he'd do in a Genin team? Danzo stroked his chin. Not sure. He's not what you'd call social. Explain. The word was more questioning than accusative. Root is not really a good place for a child to grow up. You knew that as well as I did when you gave him to me that night you revealed you knew it hadn't shut down. I had to bring you slightly to heal. I figured he'd be safer with you than on his own once the orphanages stopped wanting him. Although I haven't done any emotional conditioning on him of the type I'd usually do, I suspect he'll find being around others more difficult. He would have hated the academy. Hiruzen motioned for him to continue. More or less every operation I've sent him on has been on his own. Pretty much necessity. He relies purely on stealth, and anyone else would have compromised that. When he gets back to the base, he spends his time training or alone. He doesn't talk to many people, even the recruits his own age. When he does talk, it's to the point. He's very good at waiting. The Hokage took a folder off his desk and handed it to Danzo. The profiles of the probable graduates from this year's academy students. Arrange them into the teams you think would work best. Danzo drew a small table over from the side of the room and quickly scanned each document. Hiruzen smiled as he watched his oldest friend's mind apply itself to the problem. It was something Danzo had always been better at than he had. When Hiruzen saw a problem, his brain saw one route then had difficulty finding others when it was obvious. Danzo's mind was capable of working out all the routes, then finding the one which worked best. Even if that meant a few deaths that a different route could have avoided. The papers ru ruffled as Danzo placed the various profile sheets in groups of three. He stood up as Hiruzen inspected them. Interesting. Mostly similar to the way the instructors and I felt. Now then. He passed Danzo a sheet which simply had the word Naruto written on it. What if Naruto were added to the class? Danzo set to work again. Sheets moved rapidly from pile to pile. Groups were made and split rapidly. Hiruzen watched the dance of the paper carefully. Danzo straightened. It's more difficult than it should be I'll give you that. I assume you don't mind me shoving four of the no-hopers into a jumbo team? If you think it best. Right, then these are the teams. Hiruzen studied the bits of paper. Interesting, care to offer any sort of explanation? I felt that, he shifted a few bits of paper around, would be far more optimal for his development. Danzo shrugged. Depends what risk level you want really. Putting him with the Yamanaka girl risks her going into his head and discovering things that neither of us would like to see made public. After all, forcing Inochi to mind suppress his own daughter would be bad for morale. As for the Hyuga girl, I don't think she would react well to one or two of the truths around him. Plus, she's too shy. How? Please, your configuration has him with a pair of extroverts. It's clear you're trying to drag him out of his shell a little in your scheme. You read me like a book. Look, as it stands there is no proper place for Naruto to go that doesn't disrupt some team dynamic somewhere. He wouldn't fit properly with most of these kids. The Hyuga is too shy, the Inazuka too brash, the Yamanaka too risky, the Nara would work him out too quickly. Quickly, which is to say eventually. The Akimichi child doesn't fit his strategy. The Aburan kid might work, but that leaves the other teams heavily out of balance. At some stage, there will be an issue with all of these teams. To be honest, one of them is going to get slightly screwed over, and it is likely to be the one with him in it. He's not a team worker. They stood in silence. There is another way we can do this Hiruzen. And that is? Make him a one-man cell. After all, that's what he has been for so long now and I don't think teamwork is going to be something he'll take to fast enough. I'll continue to train him, and we give more specialized missions. Such as? Tailing teams that are on higher-ranked missions. 
If he needs to intervene he will. If he is discovered by an enemy he'll fall back, and they'll assume he's just an ANBU, if the Kanoha team discovers him, then he'll use a coded phrase like the ones ANBU used to identify himself. Hiruzen stroked his chin. He will have to be part of the regular forces. He won't be root anymore. Although I suspect I might have to change things for him if he is in a single man cell. I'll miss him. I might not look like it, but I do care for him. He is the closest thing to a son I have. Grant me one favor. Which is? Give him a choice about whether he wants to continue in secret or become a public ninja. He considered. All right, where can I find him? Danzo stared out of the great glazed windows onto the spreading buildings of Kanoha. Right now, he'll probably be running through the rooftops. Chapter 2, Observation The Hokage waited atop the tower his office stood in. He sat with his arms folded in meditation, as he focused his abilities to sense chakra. It had been far too long since he had trained this part of his skills. He waited and began to feel the world around him and the chakra. Civilians moved below like guttering candle signatures. He could feel the shinobi in the tower and around the town like fireflies moving through the light. He felt, felt for something moving, something weak. And found it. Then it was gone. Then again and gone. His body tensed as his mind processed what he could sense and plan. There. He moved off as quickly as slightly arthritic limbs would allow him, trying his best to focus on where the flickers of movement were coming from. He didn't follow directly. If Naruto was good, he'd know if he was being trailed. The Hokage wasn't the Hokage for no reason and his mind soon had it worked out. There was a pattern to the movement. He followed the pattern forwards, adjusted his movements and stopped on the rooftop as the figure landed on the other side. He couldn't tell for sure, but it looked distinctly surprised to find him waiting there. He marveled at the way the small stature blended into the shadows on top of the building. The hood was completely up and the face was hidden inside the darkness of the hood. He caught the slight ripple of the cloak behind in the breeze. How did you know Hokage-sama? Know what Uzumaki Koen? Where I was going? Then get there before me without me noticing you. He smiled. I'm the Hokage, give me some credit. First off, I can sense chakra. I must say you're very good at concealing your chakra signature given what you contain. The figure seemed to shrug, it was difficult to tell given he was barely visible in the dark. Necessary skill. Indeed. From what I could sense, you were doing a rough loop around the edges of Kanoha. You're avoiding some areas though. Mainly the Hyuga, Inazuka and Aburane districts. So, I worked out this was a pinch point in your route between two of the compounds. Then I saw the rooftops you could have chosen, and went for the one with the second most cover. There was quiet as the breeze whispered through the rooftops of Kanoha. Kanoha. You're good. Who taught you? I'm nearly 70 years old. You pick up some of this stuff as you go. The most covered building is almost always well guarded, so you take the second best. Nobody properly guards it. Indeed. Can I go? Not yet. I am the Hokage, and whilst I know Danzo keeps little secrets like you from everyone else, I know a lot about you. For example, you are 12 years old. You have so far performed 11 missions which would be ranked BC rank in the standard system, each of them being an ass assassination mission. Although none of them involved contact with shinobi above Chunin level, and the target each time had no shinobi training. The figure shrugged. I guess I'm good at what I do. Specialism in long range, ambush and stealth. What kind of idiot charges in blindly? There was silence again as Hiruzen contemplated the question. A dead one. It wasn't immediately obvious, but he could have sworn the figure smiled. He just couldn't pierce the darkness under the hood with his gaze. Can I go now? I have an offer for you. Not a mission? The tone sounded disappointed. I'll be plain. 
As it stands, you are very good at what you do. But you lack several things that I think you'll want in future that you can only really have when you're young. Such as? Now it was confused. Friends? Free time? The feeling of the sun and wind on your face? I know of these things, but do I truly need them? As it stands, you will spend your whole life in the darkness. I want you to spend some of it in the light. The figure moved slightly forwards out of the darkness. The bottom of the face under the hood was only just visible in the half-light and shadow across it. The mouth was expressionless but the whisker marks were there. Oh, the whisker marks, he'd forgotten about those. Just like when I took him from the orphanage and left him in Danzo's care. Care. I should have done more in his life. So, you offer me the chance to gain things I have not yet had? Yes. I've never found feelings to be that useful on missions. They mess up my breathing pattern when I'm aiming and distract me. Will they make me better? Hirozen shrugged. It's your choice. But I'd rather you took it Naruto Kuen. You can always return to your old ways if you don't like it. What do you say? There was a long pause. The cloaked figure moved into a ray of light that shone from the full moon that had risen over Kanoha. The moon's shadow behind him swayed in the breeze as he pushed the hood back behind his head. Blonde hair, cropped short but still somehow spiky adorned his head. The face was almost entirely emotionless, the lips a thin flat line under his nose. Hiruzen sighed as he took the image in. The eyes, of course the eyes as well. Well, the single eye he could see. In the silver moonlight, one eye was a pool of cerulean blue that shimmered like a sapphire in the light. The other eye was covered by a strip of black cloth much like the one Kakashi wore. He wondered what was under it briefly. I accept. Do I go to the academy for their graduation tomorrow? Not exactly. You won't be in a traditional team as such. With your skill set, putting you into the normal genin mold won't work. As such, you'll be shadowing the genin teams as they go on missions. Intervening as you see fit. Eventually the teams will be informed of your presence, and you can interact as much as you want to. Report to the mission room at midday in two days. Try not to be spotted. The figure smiled. I will be there. If you can spot me. He stepped back into the darkness on the building and pulled the hood back over his head. May I go now? Yes. It's been nice to see you again naruto Kuen, or at least one of your shadow clones. How did you, did you know? I've pulled the shadow clone replacement trick so many times I can recognize it very fast young Naruto. So go on and dispel to relay your conversation with the actual you. He suspected the figure nodded before it was gone again, a patch of shadowy darkness moving from roof to roof to find a better place to dispel. His brain churned as it thought about the encounter. Was he really doing the right thing? What would Minato think of his actions? He sat on the roof and looked up towards the moon. Well Minato-kun, I hope I have. I really do. Hopefully he'll become great like you were. He sat in the mission room as the remainder of the desk chunin left the room after finishing their scribing and recording of the day's events. His eyes were fixed on the clock that hung on the far wall above the entrance. The steady tick of the clock came with the second hand inexorably climbing towards the twelve. It reached midday and kept going, as time is wanted to do. Hiruzen waited a few seconds as he reached out his senses into the room. He smiled. Come out naruto Kuen. Naruto dropped lightly from the rafters of the high ceiling and landed before him. Hokage-sama. How long have you been there? Since the briefing two nights ago. I can wait. Hiruzen silently marveled at the patience of the boy before him. A and B U specialists had been known to hold a position silently for hours, Jiraiya had boasted a week to him when they met up, but he was an expert spymaster. Nobody looked? It's amazing how many people don't look at the ceiling Hokage-sama. And if they had? I had a light jinjutsu up, not so much to disguise me, 
but enough to make them not notice me, or at least not want to. He nodded. His eyes took in the appearance of the young man. He was still wearing the cloak, although it was now a blotched brown. He realized it was blending with the background as he saw it. A, stra a strap crossed his chest, the vague shape of a crossbow on his back. A strap for another weapon was also there. Interesting. Your first task is to shadow a team as they take part in their Jonin Sensei's exam. It's out on training ground 7. Come back with a verbal report of what you see. Hi. Naruto walked up the walls and left via a roof window. Hiruzen smiled as he brought out his pipe with deft, practiced movements at odds with the arthritis that had been building in his fingers. This way I should get to hear whether Kakashi has passed this team before he comes to report. And I'll know if I can collect my winnings. He puffed gently on the pipe and relaxed. With the missions handed out, he could afford an hour or two's gentle relaxation before the paperwork started to come back in. Naruto moved quickly from rooftop to rooftop. Civilians barely looked up, and other ninja only used the rooftops if they were in a hurry. That meant they weren't paying attention, and Naruto could hide away without being spotted with ease. He approached the training grounds and took to the heavy woods that were around Ground 7 to survey the test as it took place. He got to a high branch, lay down on it, pulled the cloak over him as it took on the appearance of the leaves, and closed his visible eye and whispered. The Akogan. The world became grayscale and bigger. It is difficult to describe what is nearly 360-degree vision with any kind of accuracy, because a human mind not used to it, and the brain doesn't expect its cone of vision to suddenly become different. It gets even worse when you try to marry it with normal human vision, hence keeping his normally closed. He focused the gaze mentally. The best way to describe it would be like adjust adjusting a microscope with your mind, but whilst needing to keep totally still with one eye shut fast whilst your other is the microscope. When the world is composed of gray and chakra signatures, he could see four scattered ahead of him. Hum, one large signature must be the Jonin Sensei. Three smaller ones though. He mentally stopped the Byakugan and moved forwards to get a better view. He was now within 50 meters of the Jonin. White hair, headband covering the eye, and book, which is a gray that means it's orange. Well, Lord Danzo told me they were eccentric. The headband and hair mean this should be Hitaki Kakashi. He's good. He looked around at the bushes, and quickly picked out the Jin and team members. Have any of them done any stealth lessons? Their positions are wrong, their clothing is wrong. She's even poking her damn head out from under her cover. Idiots. Their sensei knows exactly where every single one of them is. He watched, working out how he would attack the Jonin much as the team probably were. Oh well, his job was to observe the test, not to pass it. One of the team members jumped out from his hiding spot and charged Kakashi. Naruto was taken aback at the laziness with which he was stopping the Jinin's assault on him. The Jinin was using what taijutsu he had, and it was sloppy and unrefined even to Naruto's inexperienced eyes. The Jonin hadn't even taken his eyes off his book. It wasn't even an interesting fight, it was, boring really. With the Jonin dispatched and humiliated, the Jonin continued to wander gently through the training ground. Naruto followed, keeping either high in the trees or low to the ground, not following too quickly. Keeping out of the way. He settled into a new position as the second genin attacked with a barrage of shuriken and kunai from above. Whilst the accuracy of five projectiles at once was impressive for a genin, Naruto found himself almost defended by it. Who wastes five shots when you only needed one? Either way, the jonin had used a karawimi without delay and been utterly unaffected by the assault. He then disappeared away from a fireball jutsu. Naruto watched the giant jutsu as he became more and more confused by their attacking style. Whilst undeniably powerful, it was far too showy for his liking. In fact, all of these shinobi were far too of them seemed to have any plan of action, and were acting individually. 
He briefly wondered whether the three jinin could combine to win, but decided against it. The jonin was just too strong and was moving in his general direction. His hands flicked through the hand signs for his shadow deepening genjutsu and shrunk back deeper into the undergrowth. He found a hollow tree and ducked inside it, cloak taking on the mottled texture of the rough bark. That done, he activated the Byakugan once again. He checked his surroundings. The sensei had managed to take the final genin member, the mixed chakra signals around the girl indicating a genjutsu. And the jonin was moving towards him, still reading his book. He held his nerve, only if the jonin was a very good sensor, and paying attention would he actually be spotted. He kept his watch as the man approached. The man was still reading the book, although Naruto could see his visible eye glancing left and right as he did. Not only was he extremely competent, but he intentionally gave off a goofy air to ensure his jinin weren't ready for his true strength. The man glances up at the tree and looked directly at Naruto for just the slightest second. He then checked to see if anyone was around and pulled his headband up to reveal his second eye. Naruto cursed the fact he was wearing a mask, previously hidden by the book. He could have read the facial expression much better if it hadn't been there. His eye saw the other eye. The Byakugan shows life in grayscale except for Chakra. Chakra is usually a pale blue, although different personalities could show different colors. Kakashi's eye was a subtlety darker color than the rest of him. And spun gently. Like Lord Danzo's eye. He has the Sharingan too, it must be Hitaki Kakashi. Naruto realized that if he could see Kakashi's eye, it meant Kakashi could see through his Jinjutsu. He had been found. Instinct honed by hours of training kicked in. He dropped smoke, created a couple of shadow clones and fled, each clone going in a different direction. Byakugan active, he focused his real eye ahead to stop him hitting everything, and his Byakugan behind him as best he could. Aside from the blind spot where the optical nerve connected it to his brain, as best he could see he wasn't being followed at all. In fact, the figure was waving goodbye in a faintly surprised manner to each clone in turn. He stopped. Kakashi had clearly seen him, but had made no move to follow or speak to him. In fact, he had been pleasantly surprised. That didn't square up. He stopped moving and ducked instinctively under the thickest cover he could find and looked out once more using the Byakugan. Kakashi was moving off again in the slow deliberate fashion he'd done when the test had started. No urgency, just a slow stroll with the book held out in front of him. So, he had been found by an experienced ninja who, instead of demanding to know who he was and why he was there had let him escape. The last part was almost definitely true, Naruto was quick for his age and agile, but there was no way he could match the speed of a full-grown and experienced jonin, especially one with the record Kakashi had. No. He had been pleasantly surprised. That meant he was slightly expecting him to be there. But how? The Hokage must have told him. Naruto filed that away. It was obvious he was being tested. The don't be spotted, be spotted instruction the Hokage had given on the rooftops had been an obvious one. This one was more subtle, he was being evaluated by the Jonin with the team. He continued to observe from a distance, wary that Kakashi could spot him too easily if he got too close. He was lecturing his team, one of them tied to a post. He eventually turned away and walked off. The team wasn't going anywhere, might as well see what Kakashi was doing. He had a hunch. The trees and shrubbery barely rustled as he moved quickly from place to place, the Akugan, I focused on the elite Jonin. He had been right. Kakashi was hiding with a clear view of his charges and was watching them closely. Naruto stopped a short distance away and considered throwing up a genjutsu. He dismissed the option, it hadn't worked the first time, it probably wouldn't a second time. Could he get a shot off with the bow? Maybe, but this man was elite. He looked through the trees at his target again. His focus on the genin was very tight. Maybe from above? He moved up into the branches of the trees and reached behind him. 
The reassuring black leather grip of the Tonto blade he kept on his back slid into his palm in a very practiced motion. He crept along the branch until he was nearly above Kakashi, and unsheathed the blade slowly, well-oiled sheath barely whispering as the blade slipped from it. He took a grip and dropped, blade moving towards Kakashi's back through the air, as he pushed it down to increase the power it would hit Kakashi with. Kakashi reacted at the last possible moment, rolling away and launching a kunai at him. He shifted the blade just enough to block the projectile with a clang. It slammed into the earth as he prepared to move again. You're good, I only knew you were there just before you dropped. Although you're not retreating like last time. How did you spot me? Luck. The shadow in the tree didn't look right. I've seen enough genjutsu in my time and decided to take a better look. It was good work. Work. I expected as much. Hokage-sama sent me here for you to test me. Kakashi found himself a little taken aback. The way he'd said it bore absolutely no hint that he doubted it at all. It was a fair deduction. Yeah. You're good. Although a chunin, if they spotted you, would be enough to stop you at this stage. Your block with the Tonto wasn't particularly good, and that cloak will get in your way in a straight-up fight. You are quick though. I don't get spotted. Even if I do it's usually because I want to get guards to move. Quick too. Well, we'll both report to the Hokage later about each other, I guess. What do you think of my team? Too brash. No stealth at all. No dress sense either. Kakashi shrugged. Well, I have to pass them, they seem to have finally worked out to work as a team. Quite rare. Giant E. He disappeared to pass the team. Naruto moved off back towards the briefing room to wait again. It should only take a couple of hours, and he could wait. Chapter 3, Border Force Hiruzen stood in his office as he watched the clock slowly tick towards five. That was the deadline for Jonin Sensei to report back to him. It was also the deadline for all other missions to report to him. So far, he had only two appointments outstanding. One was several hours late, and the other was probably waiting somewhere to let all appointments finish. With five seconds to go before the second hand ticked its way to him being too late, Kakashi walked through the door. Sorry I'm late, I walked past the Inazuka compound on my way here and had to help retrieve a dozen stray dogs. Of course, you did. Given the time let's skip straight to business Kakashi. Another failure of a team? He could have sworn there was a smirk under that mask. Pass. Although only just. Amazing. Skill evaluation? The Uchiha is the most advanced of them, although that would be expected. The other two are civilian-born, they'll have to be taught how to do things properly. They could be good though, if they can get together properly. And the actual skill evaluation? Not while he's in the room unannounced. How did you know, know that? I can see the signs. That and you have a bit of paper on your desk with the words they passed on it. He is very good, isn't he? He is. Come down Naruto. In the darkest corner of the room, a roof beam was briefly wreathed in smoke and was replaced with Naruto. I know you like hiding, but if anyone else had found you you would be dead. A and B you don't take kindly to assassins. Still, a hinge and additional shadows. Very neat. Even if they looked at you directly, they still might not notice. Naruto merely shrugged. Kakashi? He's good, quiet and elusive. I only really found him by accident and needed the Sharingan to confirm it. That good? Some issues. He's a little too formulaic. No personal touches, just a basic flowchart approach to stealth. It works, it's a good strategy. But if someone works him out, he'd be in trouble. Good. Any comments Naruto? Naruto shook his head. Any report on your mission? The genin have no stealth skills and are too direct. The sensei is a pervert, 
based on my research on the book he is reading, who despite appearances is very quick and clever. I'd expect nothing less from his reputation. Not all of us are stealth specialists Naruto, my Jin and teams looks to be more in the role of an assault group. That got a shrug. Can I go? You are dismissed. I've given you an apartment in the city. Talk to people if you want to. I'll send someone to call for you when I have a mission for you. Naruto nodded, walked up the wall, and headed out to the roofs off Kanoha as the sunset began blurring over the sky. Not one to mix words, is he? He makes you look like a loudmouth Kakashi. True enough. What do you have in mind for him long term? Probably ANBU Black Ops. He needs a little bit more training and to learn more about people. I'm going to have him trail teams when they start doing doing higher ranked missions, then let him decide where to go. Kakashi shrugged and made to leave. Kakashi. He turned around. You have a difficult team. It's the only team we force, the best and the worst. Be careful with them, and don't bias yourself. I'll try Hokage-sama. A couple of weeks later. Naruto moved through the trees behind the team he was shadowing. This team was going to be a pain to stay behind. He sniffed himself and made a mental note to properly wash later. The smell was beginning to get up his nose unpleasantly. He would endure it for the mission. The girl of the team was a Hyuga. That alone made him wary. When he had received his Byakugan several years before, he had been warned that the clan would likely want to murder him if they saw the eye. That was because it meant that a main house Hyuga had had the eyes ripped out of their face whilst they were still alive, preventing the Hyuga seal from killing off the eyes. That alone made it nearly impossible. The second was because the Hyuga fighting style was incredibly well suited to killing people. Jukan strikes, difficult to pull off, but deadly if managed, were able to disable a person's body inch by inch. The fact she would be able to spot him through any Jinjutsu and see his chakra meant hiding from her was difficult. He had to hope his eyes had better range than hers did, and that she didn't spot him. Usually, he'd just try and stay in the blind spot of the Byakugan, but that too had held difficulties. One of the groups was an Inazuka and had a dog with him. Naruto wasn't a fan of dogs. They were big, they were noisy, and they had a cunning intelligence seemingly tailor-made to root out assassins. Like him. So, to avoid being seen, he had had to make himself smell like the forest. Which had involved breaking open some pine cones and dobing the st stuff onto his skin. The smell was unpleasant. Although less unpleasant than getting a knife stuck into him. Again. The final member was an aburam. That meant bugs. He vaguely recalled meeting one of his former master's high operatives, an aburame whose name he couldn't recall at that moment. It was an irrelevant detail for now. Bugs would be attracted to the pine smell, so he had thrown up a small jinjutsu to confuse them enough to leave him alone. Of course, the bugs would be confused enough that there was an apparent blank where should be a tree, but it would take longer for the bug user to work that out. Then he would drop back out of range. The sensei didn't appear to be a censor, although he remained suspicious of her. She dressed weirdly. Almost all of the shinobi seemed to have distinctive traits. The team was taking a scroll to the border with Suna, an ally of Kanoha's. Or something like that. He hadn't really paid attention to it. He was just going to follow the team, kill anything he needed to, then get back to the apartment he had been given, for want of a better place to be. The root barracks wasn't allowed, now that he was a full shinobi of Kanoha. He had slung the metal plate across his back, where he could reach it if needed and otherwise completely out of the way, and where it could give off no reflections. Even if the cloak went, he had dutifully removed the shine from the metal and blackened it to lower the chance of it giving him away. As far as he was aware, no one in the block knew he was actually resident in the apartment. He only really moved when they were asleep or it was dark and was very, very quiet. It was comfortable and bigger than his old baroque room and had a lot more light in it. He had immediately modified it to his specifications. 
The blinds were drawn, allowing only half-light into the room. Every moving hinge had been oiled to kill off any noise, and various floorboards were now nightingale trapped. Simply put, anyone who wanted to come and could be killed very, very quickly. He turned his thoughts away from the apartment and back to the mission. Mission. He moved to a high branch and continued to watch. The team had stopped for a quick break, possibly running ahead of schedule as far as he could deduce. They weren't tired, in fact, the dog user seemed full of energy and excitement, his teammates more reserved. The sensei looked relaxed. He studied the girl more closely. The black and white Biakugan vision wasn't particularly good at assessing appearance, but Naruto could read body language. And lips. Reserved, shy. No big movements. Hum, uses full honorifics as well, seems nervous but excited. His gaze moved to the dog user, who was bounding around with his canine partner as he talked. Brash, loud. Too loud. Offensively loud, I can hear him from here. Quite fast, very extrovert. All big movements. Keeps looking at the girl and smiling. His eyes caught the sensei. Telling him off. Hum, authoritarian, but doesn't look comfortable. Similar to the Hyuga girl. Not used to this. Defensive posture, possibly her fighting style, lack of weapons around. Mean or Jinjutsu specialist. Clothing suggests possibly the latter. Kurinai Yuhi. Confirm with eye color. The aburame he gave only a sparing glance before he realized he was getting nothing off him other than the fact he was the most proper ninja out there. Quiet, glasses could be more optimized though. No discernible body language and his back is turned. Looking back. Should be cautious of him. The bug user didn't seem to say anything, and the team was soon moving off again, moving at a 50% pace to reach the border river. He continued following, mentally preparing himself for any conflict that might occur. An attack was unlikely, but still, it always served to be prepared. Be prepared. As he moved to a better position, he slid the crossbow off his back and slipped a bolt into the firing mechanism. He had studied the maps for the mission briefly, the word river was a stretch, it was little more than a stream. But it served as a boundary, so it had to be a little more grandiose than stream. The Kanoha team was now waiting. He suspected that this mission was a C-rank only because the document was slightly important, and more to just give them experience of field work. Staying behind them, Naruto shifted himself onto a tree branch, throwing his cloak over himself to keep hidden, readied the bow, and waited. It took only 15 minutes for the Suna delegation to arrive. By that time, the Inazuka had got bored, the Hyuga nervous, the Sensei annoyed. For Naruto, it had barely been any time at all, his crossbow aimed in the general direction of the crossing. The Suna team was fairly nondescript. Their sensei looked bored as the team made it to their side of the stream, where the vegetation was sparser and shrub-like. Byakugan deactivated for the moment, Naruto began to assess the Suna team. Nothing unique-looking, clothing suited to dessert wear. Jin and Seem, interested by plant life. Some weaponry amongst the genin. Sensei carries a fan. Interesting. The Suna Jonin waved to his Kanoha counterpart, who waved back. He began to cross the stream. Then there was a bit of a kerfuffle. Naruto concentrated on the two sensei, which were now in the middle of a standoff. He read the lips to see what the conversation was. Aren't you supposed to disarm before you cross the border line? Look. It's a C-rank. No one is watching, no one is going to kill us if we break the stupid protocol. Can I just have the scroll so I can get this bunch of bedwetters home? You haven't even identified yourself. You and your charges carry weapons into Kanoha territory, and whilst we are allies, this is an affrontment. Affrontment. I know it's a C-rank, but you should be setting an example for the genin. Look bitch, I didn't ask for this. Tough. Back off, provide ID, or I will take measures against you. That made things interesting. 
Naruto turned on the Byakugan to check the chakra signatures. The Kanoha team was fine, as were the visible teams, Jinin lining up loosely behind their sensei warily. It was the second group of signatures that really made Naruto look again. There were four of them, hiding in the earth off to one side. In the earth, Dotan Jutsu. Another Suna team? Unlikely, the Suna sensei is rude, but only that. Naruto thought quickly as he had been taught as his head ran through a number of plans. He narrowed down the options to the ones he could do, then the ones he liked. Within a second of spotting the hidden team, the crossbow was aimed straight at the largest signature whose chakra was building slowly. Likely the team leader. He saw with his normal eye the Suna Jonin reach out and push Kurinai. Then it began. The earth jutsu whipped across the stream at Kurinai, who moved very quickly to avoid it. Kiba leapt forwards, suspecting one of the Suna team to be responsible, only to be knocked back by the Suna Jonin. Then the other ninja rose from the bushes. From Hinata's viewpoint, she could see Kiba sprawling back as the Suna Jonin started shouting that none of his team knew that jutsu. Then her Byakugan caught the offenders, who were leaping out to engage the surprise teams. Then a crossbow bolt slammed through the eye socket of one of the team, and he fell face first into the stream, bloody water splashing up around him. A second bolt clipped the leg of another of the new arrivals, sending him tumbling to the ground. By this point, the Suna Jonin had engaged another, and her sensei was flying through hand signs as the final member of the party made straight for her. She shook as she prepared herself to fight, Shino moving in behind her as they had trained for, as a final crossbow bolt slammed into the man's heart. He fell, oozing blood onto the sand. A moment later the final member of the ambush was caught in a jinjutsu and blindsided by the heavy fan. His torso crumpled in a way that suggested he wouldn't be getting up. She searched the surroundings for the crossbow wielder. There was someone moving away very fast. They were hooded and their chakra was heavily suppressed. But they were holding a crossbow in one hand and a kanoha headband in the other as they moved away. There was something wrong with their chakra. Heavily wrong. And devastatingly familiar. The Suna and Kanoha teams regrouped. The Suna Jonin put his fan away. That was an unexpected bonus, now, let's see whose these people are. He dragged the only living member of the ambush team up by his vest. The man was clutching his leg where the bolt had clipped him. Oh, IWA. What brings you out here? Fuck you. Corina joined the interrogation. Name. Rank. Serial number. Fuck you. Uberkage. 0111010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011010011
Hinata, seal his chakra as best you can. Shino, drain him to a safe amount. Hi. She knocked the unfortunate man out and turned to her Suna counterpart and passed over the scroll. The man shot her a cheeky smile. What? No protocol? I think it's broken enough. Damn, you're more fun than I thought. Care to come out to Suna sometime? The implication was obvious. No thank you, I'm a professional. I have a job to finish, so I bid you farewell. Good thing you had the backup hidden away. Thank them for me. Corinne, I didn't miss a beat. I will. She walked away at a brisk pace, the unconscious Chunin draped over her shoulder in an unladylike fashion. Her team scrambled to follow. Kiba stay quiet until we are at least ten minutes away. He shut his mouth. She hadn't even looked. The minutes were tense for the team as they made their way back towards Kanoha, a day's light travel at best. Kiba snapped. We had backup? Shino was the one to reply. No. We would have been told about such backup, it being logical. I cannot think of any reason why we would have unexplained backup. Hinata swallowed. K. Kurinai Sensei, I. I. Yes, Hinata chan? Don't be afraid. I looked for the shooter after the engagement ended. I saw a figure, a bit shorter than Kiba, carrying a crossbow with a leaf height. Kurinai added that to her list of oddities. A crossbow using ninja shadowing a Jinin team on an otherwise trivial mission. Is this the person Kakashi mentioned over drinks a while back? She halted her team. All of you scan the surrounding area as best you can and tell me what you can find. Shino, I guess you've already done this? He nodded as Kiba and Akamaru began sniffing and Hinata looked everywhere. There is nothing outstanding nearby, although it feels like something is out there. There. Something is confusing my bugs slightly behind us. It is very odd. She nodded. Kiba? Nothing but her team and the forest. Oh, and I think the IWA guy wet himself. Thank you, Kiba. I was trying not to notice that little fact. Hinata? He's about 500 meters away from us, back the way we came. His chakra is at odd. He's moving back out of my range. Kiba started running backwards, but Shino stopped him. Shino. Come on. We can find this guy easy. It would be illogical to fight another leaf shinobi. We have a captive, and he is our main mission priority. Kurinai nodded. Shino is right Kiba, calm down, or you'll get yourself killed by rushing in too quickly. Remember the graduation test? My little genjutsu? Kiba shivered the horror of the genjutsu fresh in his mind. Try and move off again, and I'll reapply it. And this time the dress will be pink. That shut him up. Some distance away, Naruto moved slowly back into sight range of the team. He had been spotted by the Hyuga girl, and the sensei was now aware of what he was. That annoyed him. Then again, the leaf plate was a good passport. He sped up, moving around the team to get towards Kanoha faster. Unlike them, the main gate wasn't his usual entrance, he didn't have to sign in, and he didn't have a prisoner. Chapter 4, Right Between the Eyes Night was falling again as Hiruzen finished the final debrief of the day. The team had made it back later than expected, but he put that down to the prisoner they were escorting. So, in conclusion Hokage-sama, the documents were delivered, and we captured an IWA shinobi who knew the details of handover for interrogation. Well done, Kurinai. The mission will be bumped from CB rank accordingly. Teammate is dismissed. The Jin Jinin dutifully filed out, but Kurinai hung back until they were out of earshot. Hokage-sama, the unidentified Kanoha shinobi at the stream, who is it and why the hell are they tailing my team? They are another young shinobi in training. He began doing official missions when you received your team, primarily tailing, tracking and watching of other teams whilst avoiding detection. Who? 
This is difficult to believe, especially when he took out two low Chunin level ninja in the space of a few seconds amongst other things, whilst non-fatally incapacitating a third. The fourth I was able to deal with quickly with the assistance of my Suna counterpart. This young shinobi has skills that beggar belief to my mind. Such as? He tailed my team for the entire mission and only got spotted because he intervened. Hinata's eyes can see at least 500 meters in all directions, Kiba's nose is sharp, and Shino keeps bugs in a perimeter around him. They may be genin, but no genin should be able to evade them at all. Hinata spotted him getting away from the combat zone at speed once the engagement was over. That doesn't add up either. To be honest I'm amazed the Suna Jonin didn't question it further. Indeed. You are right, it is non-standard. Your team is the first to detect him, and his report states he had to gamble on Hinata's eyesight not spotting him. How could he tell? If he had got within 20 meters of me, I should have spotted him. Am I going mad, or is he a Hyuga? Only they would be able to see that far. Neither. Come out Naruto. Kurinai sensed the short burst of chakra as the Jinjutsu Naruto had been holding ruptured. A chair in the slightly darker corner of the room became Naruto, and he walked to stand before the desk. Kurinai stared at the spot he had been as he walked over. Go back and do the same thing again. Now. He just looked back. Why? Because I should have spotted your disguise in seconds and I didn't. He just, he just kept looking at her with no emotion detectable under the hood of his cloak. The single blue I just stayed open and looked into her red ones. Naruto, please oblige her request. She is a master of genjutsu and could be helpful to you in future. Hi Hokage-sama. There was no sarcasm, irony or exasperation in that voice. Just a cool acceptance of an order. Look away please. They did. A few seconds later, she looked back, looking for the tells in his jinjutsu. Okay, the shadows are a little off, and the chair is, no the floorboards, the chair. Why can't I focus on it properly? She walked closer, and crossed her fingers. Kaya. Now she could see the chair. The transformation was good, no discoloration or obvious deformity that usually appeared on the standard genin hinge for more complex objects. She moved her hand towards the chair, expecting to meet the resistance of a person where they were hidden. There was none. She ran her hands over the chair. It was very chair-like. She tried to pick it up. It was definitely not chair-heavy. She backed off as he transformed back out again. Your hands are very gentle, they felt nice. She wasn't quite sure what to make of that. What exactly had she been touching? How did human chair transformation affect the biology of what went where? Probably best not to ask. A solid transformation hinge is a high-level skill. Interesting genjutsu, it makes it hard to focus on you. I guess you can't use it whilst moving. He nodded. It's clever. What would you do if someone called you on it without giving any indication they knew? Escape or die? What? I'm not built for protracted fights. Why don't you learn? Never needed to. That statement shocked her most of all. From anyone else, it might have been arrogance. This didn't sound like it. It just sounded like a statement of fact. There might have been a hint of pride. Not really though. Under the hood with one eye visible in the half-light, he was unreadable. Take off your hood. No. I need to know how you knew what my team was doing. No. No. She couldn't stare him down. Kurinai, there are some secrets that should be kept. That young man holds more secrets than I like. I still want to know. There was a small creak from the doorway and Hiruzen turned to look. There was a nervous squeak from someone outside. Enter. The doors opened and Hinata walked in, the Akugan active. Her face was nervous and her posture tense. Kurinai swept round to look at her. 
Hinata, why are you here? How much did you hear? Eh eh eh. All of it Korinai sensei. Why did you come back? I wanted to talk to you. Then I kept listening. I, I think I know how he could see our team. There was a click. Korinai turned to see Naruto, crossbow raised to his shoulder, aimed in a very, very still and deliberate manner directly between Hinata's eyes. She moved between them. There was a blur, and the crossbow pinwheeled across the room from Naruto's hands. The Hokage stood before him. Naruto, do not draw your weapon on a fellow Konoha shinobi. She may know a secret she should not, but killing her is not the way to manage this situation. But if she spreads it you know the consequences will be worse than her death. You still don't do it. I can handle it. Just for this, I want Hinata to reveal what she thinks she knows. Hinata? The girl was still stuck still having seen the crossbow leveled. Kurinai leant down next to her and drew her close in. Just whisper it to me if you want to. She did so, slowly and trembling, just about getting the last syllable out before she passed out, the situation becoming too much. Kurinai leant her up against the desk, marched towards Naruto, and pushed the hood back. The strip of fabric he had tied across the only made the single defiant eye that stared back even more imposing. Show me. Do you have a Biakogan? He pulled back the fabric to reveal it. The sight was off-putting, one eye pearly white and the other azure blue. After a brief second, he pulled the fabric back over it. Happy? Satisfied. Not happy you drew a weapon on my student. Harm her and you die. You will not hide from me. Fine. Kurinai drew back and mentally calmed herself. Hokage-sama, what do we do about Hinata? If she learns her suspicion is correct, she will be duty-bound to see him hunted down by her clan for having one of their eyes. It means a main house member had it taken from them. It will not sit well. Agreed. However skilled the Yamanaka are, they cannot force her to forget. You must swear her to silence on the matter, and hope her clan does not learn of it. I think the fact she wouldn't want him to die will keep the secret safe. She's not the vengeful type. The Hokage nodded and turned back to Naruto, who was standing still as he waited. Anything to add Naruto? No Hokage-sama. You could apologize? She is unconscious. It would be pointless. Then ask Kurinai to pass it on. Hiruzen smiled as it took Naruto slightly longer to act than it should have done. Naruto was now looking at Hinata's peaceful form, and he thought there was just a hint that he felt some sort of emotional response to it. Kurinai-san, please pass on my apology to Hinata? The way he said it sounded like a child using a new word for the first time. The inflection made the word apology sound like a question more than a statement. It almost made him chuckle. I will Naruto. If you'll excuse me Hokage-sama. She left, cradling the sleeping Hinata in her arms as she made to take her home. Hiruzen turned to Naruto. Now for you. You intervened in a mission, explain. I was in a better position to eliminate the threats. The two genin teams were not paying attention to their surroundings, and I suspect I saved the lives of some of them. I was only detected as I fell back, and as the team was occupied knew I could make good the escape. Hiruzen nodded. Saving genin was important, even if it did seem odd to sacrifice an elite ninja for a rookie one. He'd seen enough promising candidates die on the field because a jonin didn't care. Well, that team was always going to be difficult to avoid detection. You did well. However, draw a weapon on another of your fellow shinobi again, and it will be your arm instead of your bow. Understood? Hi, can I go? How do you feel about Hinata? There was a pause. I don't feel anything, although I would have preferred not to upset her. It was unnecessary. So, you do feel sorry? 
if that is what sorry is. Embrace the feeling Naruto. When Korina examined your genjutsu, did you feel anything about it? Her assessment of my skills was filled with praise. Is that good? If it was correct, which I feel it was. So, you are pleased with the result? Yes. Happy? Proud? If that is what they are. I've only ever felt the feeling when I have successfully completed a mission. Embrace that as well Naruto. Emotion is what makes us human as well as shinobi. I will try. May I go now? You may. May. He puffed on his pipe as Naruto went out through a high window into the dark, he was startled by the fact he had been prepared to kill Hinata to keep the secret. The fact was, eventually news about Naruto was going to spread amongst the teams. He couldn't avoid detection forever. Naruto slid in through his perpetually open window to his home. The house was chilly, the fall of night cooling the air, so that his breath slightly misted as he breathed. There were no lights on, no indication he was in. He surveyed his apartment again. A small room, an all-in-one kitchen, living room and bedroom, with a bathroom tucked neatly into a corner. He sat on the bed, the sheet still made from when whoever had got the apartment ready for arrival still made neatly. He didn't sleep on the bed, he didn't really need to. Still, sitting on the firm mattress was preferable to the floor for a few hours. He shut his eyes and folded his arms as he considered the words of the Hokage again. Was he happy that his henge and genjutsu were judged well by a fellow shinobi? Certainly, it was vindication of his skills, and although not nearly as potent, it was similar to how he felt when a well-laid plan came to fruition, usually in the form of a crossbow bolt to the cranium. He considered his life in a logical fashion. Using the time en route as a datum. Upsides, more time outdoors, more mission freedom, justification of skills by superiors, net wealth gain in apartment and mission fees. Discovery of new things. New avenue of interest to explore in learning to map experience to emotion more logically. Downsides, people everywhere. Peers illogical and loud. Lack of training by Lord Dan Danzo. That last thought caught him unawares. Certainly not having a sensei, and sharpening the skills he already had was gratifying, and he was learning much about the other forces Kanoha had to offer. But still, why did he feel the pressing need to talk to his former master? Maybe he could. He hadn't been explicitly forbidden after all. The whispering sound of his cloak was the only noise as he left the apartment in search of answers. The wall was fairly easy to get around, it could be walked over, moved under using any number of the tunnels he knew, in some cases even walked through. Out into the country, he took the long winding route designed to throw off pursuers, even though his Biakugan told him none were present. He found the hidden entrance and performed his knock. A hatchway opened and he slipped inside, the guard didn't need to look at him, and gave a brief nod to him as he walked past. Each route member had a unique knocking code that I identified them to the entrance guard. The guard knew every knock. He moved down the long shadowy corridors as if he had never left, the twisting tunnels confusing to anyone but someone who knew the layout. A fair portion of recruits simply didn't make it as they became lost in the labyrinth and structure. The genjutsu up on parts of it didn't help people either. He found the door and did his knock again. Enter. It was as if he had never left. The door opened and he walked inside before kneeling. Lord Danzo. Naruto. I can't say I haven't been expecting a visit from you. I wonder if you can tell me why. You may stand, you're not technically part of Root anymore. Naruto was quiet for a moment. I was meditating on the events of previous weeks, and the missions I have undertaken under the Hokage as you taught me to do for all my missions. Anything that required your skills? Just the one. Ambushed by an IWA team, killed three, and left one for interrogation. Then there were problems. I was spotted by the Hyuga on the team. Ah, young Hinata. Shy girl. She must have discovered your eye. 
Yes. It happened within sight of the Hokage and her sensei, so she is bound by trust. That is unfortunate. Have you got a cover story prepared? Yes. I hope the issue does not arise again, and just have to avoid using the eye when I am trailing a team with a Hyuga. A wise choice. Continue with where you were going? I was considering the pros and cons of my current situation, and one of the downsides I found was that I wasn't being trained by you. Or anyone for that matter. I should have a teacher, as I still have skills to learn. I don't know why I thought it should be you, given I am no longer root, and you cannot be seen to be training me. It is illogical, yet I cannot shake the thought. Danzo's face remained impassive, and looked Naruto in the eye with his own. Have you been feeling emotions? Now that you are not root you should cultivate them. I remember having them, years ago. I don't have that luxury now. I felt pleased that Kurina Yuhi thought my Jinjutsu was good and felt wrong after I threatened to silence Hinata before fellow Shinobi. I think these were happiness and regret, but I don't know. I don't think they would be good to have on missions. Danzo nodded and knelt down next to the shorter Naruto, placing a hand on his shoulder. It is all right Naruto. What you feel currently is that you miss me in my training. It is natural, even if two months ago I would have scolded you for it. I miss your services, but I cannot train you now. I have taught you all I know about stealth and all things, and you have surpassed me in that. What you need is a sensei who can teach you more of the subtle arts of death. A poison specialist maybe or someone who can teach you a bit more taijutsu. In your new role, it may not be long until you find shinobi, who will be able to detect you even if your stealth is perfect. I wish you good luck. Naruto nodded and wiped his cloak over his eye instinctively. He then looked at it one wondering why he had done so. Sadness is the emotion I know most about Naruto. I can give you a bit of advice. Do not dwell in it, but use it as motivation to make things better. I am sad I am not Hokage, or that I cause deaths. I use it to push myself onwards to greater things. Hi Danzo-sama. Now get going and come back if you feel the pressing need, otherwise best we dwell in the shadows. Danzo watched as his charge went through the door and vanished into the black tunnels, before turning back to his works. I hope you know what you're doing here Rosen, as you will either make or break that boy. Chapter 5, Backup Plans He was waiting again. He'd watch teams coming and going from the room with all the awareness a rabbit did just before a hawk turned it from a fluffy herbivore into a meal. He mentally ticked off the number of kills he could have made in the time between the first team coming in and the latest one. Ignoring consequences like the Hokage being in the room, adding on inaccuracies he could incur if he were to lose concentration or fall asleep, and assuming nobody noticed the rapidly rising body count in the room he estimated maybe 50 or so. Maybe more if he was lucky. Still, he was glad he had mastered a state of half-alertness that allowed him to get some rest whilst he waited. It wasn't sleep, it wasn't being fully awake. It was a sort of magic in-between zone that could tide him over until he needed to properly sleep. It was still enough for him to quickly get away if he needed to. If he was found in the first place. All he needed to do was hold his various hiding genjutsu up. The air around him was laced with a lot of his chakra. In any case, he was now carefully watching a conversation he hadn't expected to see. The Hokage was talking, respectfully and normal to a pug dog that was sitting on his desk. Wearing a vest. Speaking plain English. With a headband. He knew summoning animals existed, and knew that these must be the neen dogs of Hataki Kakashi. He had decided to further research the first person who had genuinely found him when he was hiding. He found himself impressed by the man's work. He was still fascinated. At least the bits of him that weren't working out how easily the dogs could find him, or if he could kill them were. There was only a 3.7% chance, and he decided to ignore the possibility. He could read the Hokage's lips easily, but the dog's voice was muffled, and with its back turned, he could only see half the conversation. 
he wondered if there was a jutsu he could use to hear at a distance. That would be useful. The demon brothers? No doubt he took care of that. There was gruff, bark-like voice of the dog. Continuing with the mission after the jinnin requested to. Brave. But stupid. I'll chat to him about that later. More talking. It sounded urgent. I would send backup, but there isn't a team to send right now. I mean, I could but will it be necessary? The dog's head tilted. What do I mean I could? Well let me look above and see if anything reveals itself to me. He looked up into the air and blew a smoke ring upwards in a lazy, satisfied manner. To the dog on the table, it was a gesture that was confusing, smug and utterly unexpected. Naruto read the way it was said, the body language and the words. He had a choice to go as backup on a mission that would be potentially dangerous. He was being asked if he wanted it. He dropped from where he was lying on a rafter neatly down behind the dog, which turned and looked him over. He's a little short Hokage-sama, is he a genin? No pakin, he's a special case. He's your team's backup, tell Kakashi Naruto will be shadowing the mission as backup. Shadowing mind, he'll act as he sees fit. Pakin gave him a closer examination. He looked intently at his outfit and gear, he took in the headband, he sniffed him, and recoiled with a disgusted, gruff whimper. When was the last time you washed? Naruto considered. A week ago? I don't really keep track of these things. You smell like the forest. Considering how much time I've spent shadowing teams in forests, it helps avoid detection. What on earth are you? An assassin. The dog looked at Hirozen with an incredulous expression on its pug features. Seriously? He nodded. No. Seriously? He's the real deal? Pretty much. The dog looked at Naruto one final time. Right, you better get going towards Wave Country. I'll do summon to report back to Kakashi, and I might see you out there. Naruto was up and onto the rooftops in seconds. Pakin turned back to face the Hokage. I really hope you're right about this kid. He scares me. Too quiet. He's not normal. He isn't. The dog shook its head and vanished in a puff of smoke. As he bounced from tree to tree, Naruto realized that he was feeling more alive than he had for a while. He had no idea what the feeling was, but he was feeling it, and it was pleasant. More than pleasant. The wind going through his hair, pushing his head back, his mind focused on moving tree to tree and readiness to unleash his bow on his targets. The Akugan active, he sped forwards. Then suddenly something was blocking his vision. The mist had chakra in it. That was interesting. He slowed to prepare a strategy. Going into the mist would be suicide, if someone was generating a chakra mist whilst attacking the team, it was likely they were going to be quite powerful. And more than likely they would know if he did go into the mist. He moved round the edge of the mist, crossbow held loaded in his hands. His Biakugan vision swam in front of him as he watched both real and grayscale worlds at the same time. He traced the edge, looking for anything. He found something. Another figure, masked, sitting on a tree branch, waiting tensely just inside the mist, head twitching as it followed the movement of the fighting below. He aimed the bow, looking to pierce the neck just under the mask. A gust of wind made the mist gently wisp around his leg, only the slightest of touches. But it was a touch nonetheless. The figure looked round, seemingly able to sense what was happening in the mist, and was just able to avoid the bolt as it sizzled past. By then Naruto was gone, hiding in the shadows his Jinjutsu cast. But his assailant had some control over the mist and was flooding the area he was in. Naruto made a shadow clone and backed off before the mist could reach his position. He moved back and around, keeping to cover, his cloak blending with the world around him perfectly. He heard the twang as his clone fired its bow, and then saw the smoke and gained the memories of the clone. Sunban. Well aim too. They are very quick. 
He silently cursed the fact the encroaching mist that was expanding to cover the ninja's back. Given their reaction time for the first shot, they'd be watching themselves even more carefully. Oh well, he had alternatives. He snuck closer, keeping away from the mist just in case it pushed forwards a bit further until he had sight of the ninja. From somewhere in the mist there was a sound like a tidal wave smashing into the ground, and the ninja prepared to move. Naruto made another clone and got it into position, the plan the same as the originals. He began to form hand signs, the jutsu being prepared as fast as he could. He hadn't had much time to practice it since he'd seen it for the first time, but Kurinai had performed it in full view of him, and his memory was good. Just as he hit the final hand sign as the clone fired at the figure. As expected, they whipped round to find the source of the attack, Sinbon needles held in one hand. He unleashed the genjutsu, hopeful that it would work even without that much practice and formed ad hoc. The figure froze and cried out in pain. The clone rushed forwards, dropping the bow and drawing the tanto blade of its back to go in for the kill whilst the original focused on maintaining the genjutsu. Naruto grimaced as he continued to try and flood his target's mind with terrible ways to die. It was difficult to explain exactly how a genjutsu like this worked, or even how the chakra transfer involved worked properly, but it was like trying to control a puppet from a long distance. His target was fighting the genjutsu. The clone thrust forward straight for the target's heart as it clapped its hands together. Kai! Naruto felt the genjutsu break and panted from the excursion. The strike from the tanto slammed into the ninja's clapped hands, going between both but not into the chest. The ninja kicked out fast and knocked the clone away before disappearing deeper into the mist. A crossbow bolt from the original sailed through where they had been and thudded into a tree. A few moments later, and the mist began to recede. At least the chakra within it did. Naruto dispelled the clone as he caught his breath. That was far too much like the way other shinobi fought. He had failed to get his kill. He made a note to re-evaluate the action in his head. Right now, he was on a mission. That came first. He activated the Byakugan from the undergrowth where the ninja had been. He recognized the team as the one who had been his first mission. Kakashi was down, and with the Byakugan he could see that his chakra levels were down and that he was unconscious. His mind blitzed through the options. Kakashi was alive, but heavily exerted. His foe had disappeared when the crash of water had happened, so presumably Kakashi had won his fight. Any foe capable of exhausting him was probably powerful, but alone. That made it unlikely any more attacks were coming. They were close enough to wave country to ensure that. All of that boiled down to a few simple objectives for Naruto. 1. Stay hidden and shadow the team. 2. Kill any further threats without any kind of delay, taking charge of the mission if need be. 3. Report to Kakashi with information when convenient. He took to the trees and followed the team as they made their way to the wave village. The next day. Kakashi walked slowly away on his crutches as he left his team to the tree-climbing exercise. Zabuza had been a somewhat expected twist in this. Obviously, whoever wanted Tazuna dead was willing to pay big money to achieve his goal. That narrowed down the options considerably, and only a few really came to mind. Turns out he'd gone and got himself a man who specialized in killing and water jutsu. The shipping merchant Gato, a man so rich that even the full military might of Kanoha was cautious in dealing with him. Economics was a battlefield, battlefield that most Kage didn't like to tread, the civilians and daimyos being the warriors of such conflicts. Gato was corrupt as hell, a fact so universally known that he had stopped bothering to hide it. But he was clever and cunning. That made things difficult for Kakashi. Still, too late to back out of this mission. He stumped slowly up the stairs of Tazuna's house back to his room. He couldn't show it in front of his students, but his exhaustion was so extreme he'd probably need another day's bed rest before he could be up and about again properly, and a week until he could fight at full power. Still, there was a crumb of comfort that he wasn't the only one who wouldn't be up and about soon. Zabuza would be a few days in healing as well. 
he slithered onto the sleeping mat and closed his visible eye. He felt the whisper of the breeze through the window caress the skin and pulled his mask down to experience the sensation on his face. It took a moment, but he realized that window hadn't been open when he had left the room earlier that morning. And he had been the last one out. He reopened the eye to see the cloaked figure standing over his bed roll. So that's what you look like under your mask. What did that? An ANBU mission clusterfuck. My first mission. Someone blew our cover, and there were suddenly jutsu everywhere. I ended up facing several kumonin who knew some winjutsu. They left an impression on me before I could take care of them. He pulled the mask down once more to show his lower face. It wasn't all that bad in Naruto's book. A long scar ran from one side of his face to the other under his mouth. It was fairly clean, but still a thin line of red, ruined skin that ran across his face. Odd, but nothing truly disgusting. The kind of scar that ladies might find dashing and heroic would have been a good way of describing it, but Naruto was ignorant of such a thought. Winjutsu aren't nice to be on the end of. This one was half an inch from killing me. I was the only one that made it out. The cloaked figure stood still. How did it really happen? Do I have to explain it again? ANBU, Winjutsu, cut me open badly. You're lying. The wound is too jagged to be caused by a Winjutsu, the scar is too established to be less than 10 years old as my guess. Your ANBU time started more than 10 years ago. Kumonin tend to prefer lightning or earth jutsu to wind jutsu. Plus, you shut your eye to try and hide it. You'd make a good interrogator Naruto, why are you an assassin? I try not to talk too much. Fine. In the academy I challenged an older student to a spar when the teachers weren't looking. I was the best of my year and got too cocky. He brought out a kunai and I didn't dodge it well enough. Idiot. I was, it could have been worse I guess. He pulled the mask back up over his chin. Quite. I am here as backup from the Hokage. Good. Tell me what you know about the mission. From what I've seen, you're escorting a bridge builder and protecting him from someone who wants him dead. Two high-level ninja involved in trying to kill him. The one I fought uses Sinbon very efficiently. Pretty much. The other ninja is Momochi Zabuza. Kiri Missing Nin uses the Kubikiri Bocho. High rank too. I expect him to attack again in about a week. What's your plan, given that you are in effect a team leader of your own cell? I will shadow your team and assist in combat where necessary. Unless there's anyone you need assassinated. Kakashi stroked his chin, fingers tracing the scar unconsciously. Actually, actually, there is. It would benefit our mission immensely if you could, and potentially rid the world of a nasty person. Name the target. Gato, shipping merchant and notorious crime lord. Probably nearby, likes to see his associates do their dirty work personally. I will endeavor to kill him. It was the emotionless tone of voice that sent a chill down Kakashi's back. Make your original mission your main priority. In truth, I'm not sure killing Gata would be a good idea. It's not how Kanoha wants to be seen to operate. As I said, we have a week. A normal ass assassination mission takes several months of information gathering and intelligence operations, and that's with a team. Naruto nodded. Can I go now? Kakashi nodded and felt Naruto leave through the window. He lay back on the mat and tried once again to sleep. It was partially reassuring that he had an extra pair of hands around, but it was the fact that that pair of hands was Naruto that tinged that with a layer of caution. He had nearly drifted off when Naruto reappeared at the window. Oh, and eventually I'll find out the real reason behind that scar. Kakashi smiled. He was good. Naruto lay in the undergrowth next to the house. He looked out across the ocean that separated the tiny island nation from land. The great gray bridge stretched off towards the far shore. The sun, setting gently had turned the sky into a mix of pinks, reds, 
oranges and yellows, melting into the horizon and dancing on the surface of the water. A few light clouds had their edges turned to silver and gold by the light, and their bodies pinkened by it. The slightest sliver of the moon was brightening, brightening as it rose. Only the lightest of ripples moved across the surface of the cool blue waters from a gentle breeze. Otherwise, the gulf between lands was calm and still, reflecting the sunset, so that it stretched over most of Naruto's vision. Not that he saw of course. He merely saw an area where there were no hostile or allied presence. He was watching the house. Having spent the majority of the day hidden away in a half days until he could search for Gato's base of operations in the night, he had instead decided to watch what counted as their base of operations. He was about to move out when his hearing picked up on angry shouts coming from the house. He readied his bow just in case when the door burst open and one of the Jinin team ran out, frustrated anger written all over his face. He passed within a foot of Naruto's position. Muttering under his breath as he went, angrily slashing at foliage within reach with a kunai. Now faced with a choice, Naruto's mind quickly decided what to do. Scoping out Gato's base was a secondary objective, and protecting the team he was with a primary one. He followed the genin out into the forest. He wasn't the best tracker in the world, more accustomed to hunting through forests of people and glades of buildings, but the genin made it easy. Slashes adorned branches as he went, cut leaves slashed. Naruto checked one or two of the notches as he went, noting the kunai was relatively blunt from its treatment. He continued to follow the genin until he stopped running in a clearing. His path trampled through the meadow and the clearing, flowers ripped up by his angry footsteps. The darkness gave Naruto time to hide better, and he kept watch as he watched the furious exercises the boy was doing. Mousy brown hair shook as he moved through kunai routines, repeating each one several times whenever he made a mistake. He found a tree and began kicking and punching at it viciously. Naruto was impassive. Training like this was unorthodox certainly, but could only prove useful. He wondered what could have driven the other boy to take such measures. He hadn't failed a mission yet, so drive to improve by failure wasn't a factor. It was unlikely his sensei had ordered such training, and if he had he should be supervising it. His mind once more worked on possibilities. It was confusing. There was no reason that he was doing this, no rational reason Naruto's mind could see at least. He did understand the harshness of the training though. He remembered his younger days in the root barracks, practicing day and night to perfect the arts of his trade. He recalled the hours in the training halls, crossbow in hand as he shot and shot to perfect his aim. How he had gone out at night to learn how to adjust for wind and rain. He recalled the harsh fights with the weapon instructors, trying to use the Tonto blade to good effect. He recalled the pain. There had been a lot. The special training. The even more special training. The white-hot pain. He turned his attention back to the boy, who was shouting loudly as he assaulted another tree. The rough, unyielding bark was slowly cracking under the repeated blows he was sending at it, although Naruto could tell the boy was in pain. He also noticed the vocabulary he was using was getting fouler by the moment. There were names too, a couple of them repeated over and over. So this had to do with his teammates? Maybe he wanted to catch up to them in prowess? But the bell test had shown him to be far superior to the female member of his team. The other member? Possible. Maybe this was his normal routine? He watched with increasing fascination as the boy began flicking slowly through hand signs to try a jutsu. He activated the Byakugan without too much further thought. The chakra being formed was a muddy brown, so some sort of doton technique? He watched the chakra build in the genin in a sloppy and uncontrolled manner before a mud wall tried to raise itself from the ground. He could see it was thin, to the point where the angry kick the boy aimed at it turned it into powdery dust. He saw the boy do it again. And again. Each time the chakra within him gained was smaller and smaller, until nothing happened. Then the boy passed out. He was still breathing, just sleeping from exhaustion. Oh well, better keep watch then. 
he looked up into the pitch black sky that nightfall had finally brought about. The light twinkles of the stars were present as he looked up, picking out formations of stars into shapes. He didn't know why he did this. He just did, it was something to do to pass the time. He was good at waiting. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.